Hi guys, this is Sadiq from Dragon.com and in this video, we'll show you how to route the latest rising OS ROM using Magisk. So for the sake of reference, I'm using a Pixel 6 device and it has the latest rising OS based on Android 13, but the steps are applicable across all the phones and across all the versions of rising OS. So with that in mind, let's get started. Please take a backup of all the data on your phone just to be on safer side. Once that is done, first and foremost, you have to install Android SDK platform tools. This is the optional ADB binary given by Google and is required to execute ADB command. So download it from the link given in my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I've done the extraction E drive as you could see. You could extract them to on anywhere on your PC. Once that is done, you will have to enable USB debugging. This is required to execute ADB command. So let's now carry out this task. So go to the settings menu on your phone, then go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you have enabled development settings. Now go back, go to system. You should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone. Tap on OK. You might get one more prompt regarding the RSE key fingerprint. So tap on allow or OK in that as well. Once that is done, let's now verify the debugging connection. So go to platform tools folder, type in CMD in the address bar and hit enter. This will launch the command prompt window inside platform tools folder as you could see. Now type in ADB devices and hit enter. Make sure you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then you will have to unplug and replug your phone from the PC, disable and re-enable USB debugging, or tap on revoke USB debugging, or you should use the official, official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB tweaks and make sure you are getting a serial ID. Once you are getting this ID, let's move to the next step. So next thing you now have to download the latest Magisk APK file. I have made a guide for the same. You could refer to my guide and get hold of that. Just a minute, let me show you. So this is my guide and just scroll to the table of content section and download the latest Magisk version 26. So this is the APK file and you could also refer to the change log. It's the official GitHub change log. Anyways, download the Magisk APK file from here. And once you have done the download, you have to send it to the platform to folder on your PC. So let's do that as well. So just a minute, let me know access. So this is the Magisk APK file. Transfer the file to the platform tools folder. And you have to also transfer the APK file onto your phone as well. So if your phone is not visible here, then that's not an issue. All you have to do is simply expand the notification section and expand the charging just device section and then choose file transfer. But this your phone should now be visible on your PC and make sure to transfer the Magisk APK file inside your phone as well. So let's do that too and so you could place the file anywhere you want on your phone. So this is the APK file. So as of now we have placed the Magisk APK file onto our phone and inside the platform tools folder. Now the APK which is inside the platform tools folder needs to be changed to a zip file. So just right click on it and select rename. Now remove the dot APK from the end and change it to dot zip and hit enter. You will get a prompt on your phone on your PC and just hit the yes button and with this we have got the magisk in a zip format so the magisk which is on your phone should be in the apk format whereas the magisk which is inside the platform tools folder should be changed to the zip format once that is done let's move over to the next step so you will now have to boot your phone to the recovery mode you could also use the shortcut key of just pressing the power key and selecting restart and then choosing the recovery or you could use the universal approach of using the adb command so for that for the command you have to type in adb reboot recovery and your phone should now boot to the rising os recovery the first boot up could take a few seconds that's completely normal so let's wait for the phone to boot up to the rising os recovery and it should only take a few seconds in the meantime i will recommend you to rename the file of magic to something shorter so that it becomes easier to type in cmd window so for the sake of reference let's just rename the file to magisk so the Complete name becomes magis.zip. It will be now easier to type in the CMD window. Anyways, as you could see, our phone is now in the recovery mode. So now select apply update and choose apply from ADB. With this, our phone is now in the ADB sideload mode. So now open CMD window and site platform tools folder and type in ADB devices. Make sure you're getting a sideload keyword as you could see. So with this, our phone is now in the sideload mode and we could now sideload the magis zip file. So just to repeat, make sure the magis zip file is there inside the platform tools folder on your PC. If that's well and good, then now let's do a sideload of the magisk file. So type in adb sideload and name of the file which is magisk.zip and hit enter. The sideloading will now begin. 
and as you could see the flashing has now started in the same day window the process might get stuck at 34 percent that's completely normal you could keep a track of the flashing from the phone itself and overall i guess it takes around 15 to 20 seconds for the flashing to complete and with this your phone will then be booted to the recovery mode itself and as you could see we have got the install complete with status zero so once that is done you could now tap on reboot system now and your phone should now boot to the os do keep in mind that as of now magis has only been installed in the back end in the front end we might not have any gui to inter interact with so we now have to install the magis apk file as well and that is the reason why we have transferred the magis apk file onto our phone because the flashing is now done only in the back end in the front end we might not have the magis app as well so we will now have to install the magis app as well so let's first verify the same and then we'll show you so let me unlock the phone and as you could see we don't have the magis apk as of now so let's now install the apk file make sure you have transferred the apk file onto your phone once that is done let's now access the magis app from here and tap on continue then hit install but this the magis will now be installed onto our phone then tap on open and it will now bring up a prompt that it requires additional setup just tap on ok and magis will now reboot your phone within 5 seconds and it will then flash and install the required dependency please don't interact with your phone while the flashing is going on the flashing usually takes around 5 to 10 seconds and once that is done your phone will then automatically boot to the os the first boot up might again take a few seconds because it has just passed and flashed the patch boot img file so do keep in mind that the flashing and the first boot up after the flashing could take a few additional seconds that's completely normal so let's wait our phone to boot up and then we'll, we'll verify the process so let's now unlock my phone and as of now as you can see we have got the magisk app let me bring it to the home screen so let's launch the magisk app and you might get one more prompt so this time tap on ok and now select direct install if you don't get any prompt then you could directly tap on install next to magisk and select direct install recommended then tap on let's go magisk will now flash the newly patched boot img file as you can see flashing is now done and you could now tap on the reboot button so hit reboot and your phone will now boot to the rooted os this time around the root will be completed successfully and as before this boot might also take a few additional seconds that's completely normal so let's wait for the phone to boot up and then i'll show you the next process so the boot up would only take a few seconds so let's wait for the time frame and then i'll show you the process as well moreover since we have done the root okay i'll talk about that later on let me first unlock my phone and let's now launch the magisk app and this time around as you could see our phone is now rooted by magisk let's now verify the same using an app so i've installed the root checker app you could install it from play store so launch the app and let me skip the initial setup screen from here and now type on verify root as you could see we have got a magisk prompt so tap on grant and with this we have now rooted our phone and the rising os is now rooted by magisk but as you might be aware since we have rooted our phone it might have tripped the safety net test as well so let's first verify if the safety net tests are failing or passing if it's failing then we will pass those tests as well so for that i am using the yasnac app you can install the app from play store so install the app go online and tap on run safety net test it will now run the test and as of now both the basic integrity and cts profile match tests are failing so as of now you will not be able to use any banking and payment app so let's now pass both this test so let's get started first and foremost please take a backup of all the data on your phone just to be on safer side and then let's get started with the guide so first of all, you have to hide the magisk app so launch the magisk app then tap on the settings icon at the top right then go to the hide the magisk app and give it any name of your choice so for the sake of convenience let me now rename it to dwidewin you could give it any name of your choice whatever you want so just a minute so once you rename it tap on ok and it will now hide the magic cap and it will only take a few seconds so so as you, you will get a prompt to add a shortcut to home screen i don't want a shortcut so i'm tapping on cancel let me now show you as you could see the magic app is now hidden the app icon is gone and the name has been renamed to dwidewin let me bring the app to home screen so from now onwards this is our new magic app next up let's now go to the next step you now have to add the system list host module so tap on the settings icon 
then just tap on systemless host and the module will be added so go back go to the module section and make sure that the module is now up and running once that is done let's move over to the next step so you now have to enable zygisk so again as you could see currently it's showing no next to zygisk so let's now enable zygisk as well so tap on the settings icon then you have to enable the toggle next to zygisk it will now ask you to restart your phone we will not do a restart now we will do a restart after flashing a module so let's now flash the module the module will be flashing is named as the safety net fix module so make sure to download this new module which is the version 3.0 so transfer the module onto your phone for that expand the notification section and select charging this device and choose file transfer and your phone should now be visible on your pc so, so download the file and transfer the file onto your phone let me now transfer this file is the universal safety net fix module so this is the mod copy it and then send it to your phone you could place them anywhere on your phone where you want and paste the file here once we have got the module let's now flash the module via magisk so launch the magisk app then you have to tap on go to the module section and tap on install from storage now you have to select the module so it's the universal safety net fix module select it and then tap on ok in the prompt that appears and the module will now be flashed once that is done you have to tap on reboot so we are doing a reboot after enabling zygisk and after flashing the module so we have combined two steps into one and then we are doing a reboot just to save some time so after flashing the module the first booter might take a few additional seconds that's completely normal after that we will now proceed ahead and then enable the denial list onto our phone as well so first off let's wait for a phone to boot to the os so the first boot up could take a few additional seconds let's wait for the time frame and then we'll carry out the rest of the steps i have linked all this guide in the description as well you could refer to my guide to route the phone and pass the safety net test you could refer to my guide and do the job as well anyways now launch the magic cap and go to the module section and make sure both the safety net fix module and the systemless host module are up and running once both these modules are activated now tap on the settings icon in the top right and now you have to tap enable the toggle next to enforce deny list once that is done go to configure the deny list and now tap on the workflow icon and select show system apps but this all the system apps are now visible so you now have to hide the root from the following three apps google play service google play store google service framework and the google play product service this is only available on some rom so if it's there on our rom then you have to hide the root from this app as well so let's now get started first off let's search for the play service so go there and make sure to enable the service of all the toggles under play service next up let's do so for play store as well so expand it and enable all its services then we have the google services framework so let's search for that framework app so expand it and enable the toggle next to all the services then last is the google play protect service so let's search for play protect so the play protect is not there in this form so that's not an issue you could simply skip this so we only have to hide the root from these three apps and after that you have to hide the root from the banking and payment app of your choice so do that as well and once that is done you now have to remove the data of all these apps so let's do that as well so go to the settings menu from there you have to go to apps and show all, see all apps then tap on the overflow icon and select show system so let's first remove the data of play service so search for the play service app then go to storage and cache then go to clear manage space and tap on clear all data and hit ok next up you have to do so for play store as well so let's now search for the play store app then go to storage and cache section then tap on clear storage and tap delete next up is the google service framework so let's search for the framework app go to storage and cache tap on clear storage and delete after that we don't have the play protect service you can skip this now you have to remove the data from those banking and payment app from which you have hide the root so make sure to remove the data of all those apps as well once that is done you will now have to restart your phone this restart is compulsory so let's now restart our phone to the system so let's wait for the time frame and then we will check out the result as well and this time around we should now be passing both the tests so let's wait for the phone to book to the os and then we'll verify the status of our phone so the first boot up could take a few additional seconds from the subsequent boot up it will not take that much longer and our phone should now boot to the os so i'll also have to discuss something very important so let me discuss that as well as soon as the phone boots to the os 
I will launch the Magisk app and show you something. So there is a UI bug in Magisk. So if you now launch the Magisk app, and if you go to the settings menu, then go to the configure deny list. So as you could see currently, the Google service framework is unchecked, and the Google Play service is missing from this list. It's just a UI bug and nothing to worry about. In the backend, everything is working well and good. So if you see this thing that the Play service framework is unchecked and the Play service is missing, there is nothing to worry about. In the backend, everything is working well and good. So now that said, let's now launch the Yasnak app and make sure you are online and tap on Run 15 at your station. And let's now check out the results. So as you could see, we are now passing both the tests and you could now easily use any banking and payment type of your choice. So guys, on that note, I round off this video. If you have any queries, do let me know in the comment section. And guys, please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks. Thanks a lot for watching.